hey friends, Brian here. Uh, thanks for tuning in for another installment of Leftovers. Our, our goal with this little mini-series uh, throughout each midweek is just to grab a few nuggets that didn't make their way into the message uh, the previous week, and then to go just a tiny bit deeper into any given topic that we're talking about. So thanks for tuning in. Um, this morning, uh, I, I told you this last week that this morning we would talk a little bit more about um, healing and anointing with oil. Uh, as you remember from this last week's uh, message, we, we really unpacked kind of a theology on healing and then gave some nuggets on uh, how to proceed in praying for someone that you want to pray over uh, them for healing. And one of those uh, points was whenever possible, uh, pray in person, lay hands, and anoint with oil when appropriate. Uh, now, what do I mean by that? Well, uh, sometimes you can't be with someone, obviously, so you can pray for them from afar for healing. But if you can, to be in their presence. Um, now, uh, we, we talk about this quite often, that uh, we as Christ followers sometimes do things that are weird. And uh, if someone's not ready for it and you go to lay hands on them and pray, that can weird them out. Uh, uh, some people also have kind of a phobia of people touching them or irritations or just quite frankly, don't want to be touched. And so that's why I threw the tag on there when it is appropriate. And a way to accomplish that is just to merely ask them, hey, I'd love to pray for you for healing. Do you mind if I lay my hand on you? Uh, and they may say yes and then absolutely proceed. And, and they may say no. Uh, don't be offended by that. Uh, you can still pray. Uh, there's nothing magical about putting a hand on someone. Uh, so just be aware of that. And then the second thing is in regards to praying for healing uh, using oil. Now, for some, uh, the use of anointing oil or, or just oil in general when praying is something uh, that you're familiar with. But for a lot of people, that's kind of a, a foreign idea when we hear... Uh, that we want to anoint you with oil, uh, the question can naturally be raised in our own mind and hearts like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what does that even mean? So that's kind of the, the precursor for why we're even gathering this morning. Kind of talk a little bit further um, about that. So where do we start? Well, originally uh, in, in the Bible, when we look at the, from the very first church, moving forward. And even prior to that, we see an enormous amount of examples, both in the Old and the New Testament, for a variety of reasons. In fact, they would use oil literally for everything. Uh, if you got married, you got oil poured on you. If you uh, passed away, you were uh, given oil onto your body as preparation for entombment. Uh, if you were sick, you got oil on you. In fact, in a lot of instances, uh, pre-Jesus, if you walked into someone's home, let's say I walked into Alex's home as a guest. He, uh, he and Manda invited us over for dinner and Sandy and I would walk in. They would anoint us with oil because we were their guests. So anointing with oil has an enormous uh, length of history attached to it. Uh, and so there's a lot of examples um, of that. Originally, in regards to the church, it was most often used by the priests and only the priests. Um, why is that? Well, if we read the Old Testament, we, we see that the priests were often given exclusive things that only they could do, only they could say, and places that only they could go. Uh, and then slowly that began to change. And we see in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, uh, a, a stark transition where now the kings were able to use oil. Uh, so now you've got the priests using it, you've got the kings using it. And then we get into the New Testament, the new covenant, the new church that's born with the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we begin to see oil being used by the everyday ordinary 
uh, person. Uh, there, and there's a reason for that. We read in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that we, Christ followers, are now part of a royal priesthood. We are part of a new family. And therefore, things that were relegated only to the priests and then only to the kings are now available to you and I. And so there, there is this ability to grab oil and to anoint. Well, what happens with that? Well, we read in all kinds of different scriptures. We, we read in uh, the book of Psalms, in Psalm 89, that David was anointed with oil. And then we jump to the New Testament, and we see in Mark chapter 6 that oil was used to cast demons out of individuals and to heal the sick. Well, what did, what did that look like? So... When we, when we talk about how oil was used and what it looked like in biblical times, often uh, a vial like this, this is a, a small one, one half ounce bottle of uh, frankincense and myrrh, smells beautiful. It's an incredible, incredible oil. Well, oftentimes something like this, or actually a little bit smaller, would literally just be poured on the individual's head. Uh, and it was both... Uh, praying for them, but it was also an incredible sacrifice uh, to, to take someone and say, you are so important that I'm just going to empty this because oil was expensive. Nowadays, it's, it's not as expensive as, as it used to be. So we don't quite know uh, across the board, every time someone was anointed with oil, what exactly it looked like, but we do know that it happened. We also know this, the Bible says that where two or three or more are gathered, that God is present. And when we pray, there should almost be, not almost, there should be an expectancy that God in, in, in his entire being is going to be present and will move. And so uh, similar to baptism, we associate now with praying. And that is when we pray, it's an outward expression. It's a verbal expression of something internally that we're desiring. Because when we pray for someone, I am so inside desiring that God would heal, but I'm saying it outwardly. You with me on that? And so the oil. Why, why even anoint with oil? Well, back in the early church, what they would do is they would take oil and eventually in the course of church history, it came to where you would just put a dab of oil on your finger and you would grab the forehead and you would put it in the form of a cross and you would anoint in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that oil would be placed on the individual's head. And it was symbolic of the Holy Spirit's work in that moment. That's an important point because the early church oil and our oil today, there's nothing special about it. Sometimes, or, or and we'll get to this, the individual praying, but there's nothing special about the oil. There's nothing special about it then. There's nothing special about it now. The specialness, specialness only comes through the power and the presence of God in that moment to pray. So when we anoint with oil back in the day, they didn't have keyboards. Uh, they didn't have emojis. They didn't have punctuations. They had just what they would say. Well, anointing with oil and praying over the individual was almost like putting an exclamation point on the end of your prayer. It was saying, please heal this individual. And I anoint them to almost say, please heal them. It was an exclamation point. The second area of interest when, when one would get anointed with oil is the fragrant smell would linger with that individual, and it still does today, for a long period of time, long after they've been prayed for. Well, why is that important? Because it reminds the individual who has just been prayed for for their healing that the Holy Spirit is at work. Every time that individual would smell the fragrance, they would smell the cinnamon, 
They would smell the frankincense. They would smell that oil. It would remind them God is working. Not a definitive, hey, I smell this, therefore I am healed, but merely a reminder. That's an important point. Because so often we can be prayed for or we can enter into a a time of devotion in the morning and life gets busy, it goes on and we forget. The smell of the oil reminds us to keep our eyes on Jesus, that he is the one who heals. He is the one that knows our bodies more intricately than any specialist surgeon doctor on this planet. The Bible says he knit our bodies together and wrote our stories and placed us in our mother's womb. So we're literally going before the great surgeon, the great physician that knows our bodies and knows what we need for our complete healing long before it's even asked for. So that's just a little bit of insight into why we anoint. And so moving forward here at Legacy Church, we will on a regular basis allow you to, not allow you, that's a wrong word, we will invite you and implore you to come forward to not only be prayed for and to lay hands on you, but to anoint you with oil. And it has nothing to do with who prays for you. It doesn't matter if it's me, it doesn't matter if it's Alex, it doesn't matter if it's Debbie or Alicia or someone else who we bring up. The issue isn't the one who is praying and the issue isn't the oil that's used. The issue is the majesty and the divinity of our great God and King, whom we are going forward and approaching his throne and asking for mercy. So a little bit of an an insight. If you want to do a little bit more research on your own, there are several areas all throughout the Old and New Testament to dig a little bit more into this idea of anointing. And again, as a reminder, our focus, and and we see this in Exodus chapter 30, is the idea of Kadesh, to be set apart, to be holy, so that God can do his work. So when we anoint, we're just setting apart this individual and praying. So as we get ready to close, uh, I want to pray for you. If you're watching this and you're hurting, if you're in pain, if if you need healing, uh, I may not know in this exact moment what you need, but I trust that God does. I trust whether, whether you're watching this a year from now or right when we send it out, I trust that God knows exactly what you need. And so I'm gonna pray for your healing. So would you pray with me and then, and then we'll get ready to close. Jesus, I thank you that you are the great physician. I thank you that, that you still are in the business of not only saving people in redemption and salvation, but you long to heal. You long to make our bodies right. And I'm so grateful for that. Thank you that we don't just operate on our own and and whatever we feel or, or struggle with is we are left to ourselves to get through it. But you care deeply for us. And so for the one who is watching this, for the man, woman, or child uh, that may have pain, who, who may have uh, an illness of, of regardless of severity, who may have uh, injuries, I just ask and pray in the name of Jesus and by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would heal that individual, that you would come right alongside them right now as they sit or drive uh, or or just are are absorbing this message. Uh, I pray that you would stand, sit, or lie next to them, that they would not be alone. We know in the Bible that just a mere touch from your cloak can change everything. And so would you reach down with your holy hand? Would you show this individual who's hurting favor and bring healing to their body, if not fully, at least temporarily, and that they would know that it's you and you would use that to to increase their faith in you. So we trust you with that and we love you and we give you our lives. Thank you for the word of God and thank you for your holy presence every day in our life by the power of your spirit. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in for um, you know another episode of, of Leftovers. We'll talk to you next week as we talk about praise. Uh, and until then, if there's anything we can do, please let us know. Um, God be with you and have a great day.